All right, and here we are to write two-step equations with me, Mr. Hain. So our central question for this video is, how does math vocabulary hmm, help me write equations? Okay, so the key thing here is going to be vocabulary. All right, so in my classroom, I say which group can answer first, but I mean, like on this video, we're going to just read through this problem and do it together. So here's a robotics application problem. You. Yes, you want to attend a two-week robotic day camp that costs $700. Great price. Your parents will pay the deposit of $400 if you pay the rest in weekly payments of $15. Let's use the questions below to help find the number of weeks you will need to make the payments. All right, so they've already started this off for us. And we see it's $400 for your parents plus 15 times the number of payments or the weeks that have gone by. So, zero weeks, you don't have $400. That's the amount paid. Um, one week, you have $415. And if we keep on going with the table, at two weeks, you have $430. Three weeks, $445. And at four weeks, you have $460. So, the key thing here is to see that the, that the one term that is changing is multiplying the 15. And if the one thing that's changing is multiplying the 15, if something is changing, it is a variable. So we can do this another way. What other methods can we use? We can use a simple two-step equation. Um, shout out to Azalea G. Um, you definitely corrected me in class, and so I corrected this video and this slide. It's for you. So I'm going to subtract 400 from each side. That leaves me with 15 x is equal to 300. That was a 400 plus 15x equals 700 is my equation. The inverse of a positive operate of a positive number is a negative number, so I subtract 400 from each side, giving me 15x equals 300. And then I have, uh, d of course, the inverse of multiplication, 15 times x is division, so I divide both sides by 15 and it equals 20 weeks or 20 payments of $15 each. Awesome. So we're going to leap directly into an application problem from the, for this one. And uh, you and your friend spend a total of $33 for dinner. Your dinner costs $5 less than your friend's. So we're going to write and solve an equation to find out how much you spent for dinner. So there's a lot of information to unpack. And the first thing is we don't know how much our friend's dinner costs, so that's going to be our variable x. x equals our friend's dinner. In the problem, it says our dinner costs, or your dinner costs, $5 less than your friend. So if your friend's costs x, then yours would cost their dinner minus $5. Cool. So now we know that um, your dinner is x minus 5, and your friend's dinner is x. So we can write an equation for that. If we add the two dinners together, x for your friend's dinner and x minus 5 for your dinner, hence x plus x minus 5 equals $33, the total for both dinners, we can start solving the two-step multiple-step equation, in this case three steps, uh, to, to find out how much your dinner costs. All right, so first I'm going to combine the x's. x plus x is 2x. So 2x minus 5 equals 33. Of course, the inverse of subtraction is addition, so I add 5 to each side, leaving me with 2x equals 38. Inverse of, divi of multiplication is division, so I divide each side by 2, and, and x is equal to 38 divided by 2, and if you're screaming it at your, at your TV or computer screen, you're right, x equals 19. Now, a lot of people stop there, but the question asks, how much did you spend for your dinner? So x, remember, is your friend's dinner. So uh, x minus 5, or 19 minus 5, is your dinner, and your dinner costs you $14. So that's how we would solve that. So leaving this here to give you a hint to kind of figure out how math vocabulary is impacting our decisions, I'm going to read examples B and C, and then you can pause the video and do them on your own. So exam uh, example B is 8 less than 3 times a number is negative 23. A lot of people say 8 less then 3 uh, times a number is 20, negative 23, which is the problem. A lot of people are going to say 8 minus, and I'm going to give you a hint. That is not how you write that equation. So for example, C, it is 13 is 7 more than 1 fifth of a number. 13 is 7 more than 1 fifth of a number. So go ahead and solve these equations 
turn them into an equation, and then solve them. Uh, pause the video. No answers, just letting you do the work on your own and do it the same way that I did example A. I'll be here when you get back. And I'm back. Do you got this? Well, let's prove it. So I've got three more examples for you to do. Um, very straightforward. D, E, and F. I'm going to read them. Feel free to listen to me read them and start working on them or just pause the video after I'm done reading them. So example D. 15 equals 3 more than 6 times a number. Example D, 15 equals 3 more than 6 times a number. Example E, 10 increased by the quotient of a number and 6 is 5. 10 increased by the quotient of a number and 6 is 5. And example F, the difference between 12 and 2 thirds of a number is 18. The difference between 12 and 2 thirds of a number is 18. So go ahead and pause the video to solve these three problems like you did uh, examples B and C. I'll be here when you get back. And we're back. So let's take a look at another application problem. Here it's Kendra. She paid $7 for her admission ticket to the fair and bought 12 rod tickets. She spent a total of $31 on admission and ride tickets. So we got to figure out how much she was the cost of only one ride ticket. So um, $7 was her admission, and she bought 12 tickets, so 7 plus 12x equals 31. All right, so the inverse of a positive number is, a, is subtracting our negative number, so I've got subtract 7 from each side. That gives us 12x equals 24, uh, and the inverse of multiplication is division, so divide each side by 12. And each ride ticket costs 24 divided by 12, or... $2. So uh, go ahead and pause the video after I read problem H. Uh, go ahead and do it. It's the exact same way that we solved example G. So for example, H, the current temperature is 54 degrees Fahrenheit. It's expected to rise 2.5 degrees Fahrenheit each hour. So in how many hours will the temperature be 84 degrees Fahrenheit? Hmm. Pause the video, solve that equation. I'll be here when you get back. And, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in my class, write your summary. Make sure your table of contents is updated. And for everyone else, till next time, keep doing the math.